Well, church, this morning, let me, let me ask you a question. Let me start by a question. Here, here's my question, true, true question. If, if I gave you license, if I gave you permission, if I could give you permission by the word of God not to forgive one person in your life, past, present, if I could give you the license, and you don't have to say, please don't say your, their name out because we're online, but um, <laughs> maybe, maybe you have more than one, but who would that be? Who would that be? If you were to say, oh yeah, if I got a get out of jail free card and I wouldn't have to forgive that person or, or those individuals, that's, that's who it would be, Pastor. Because really that's where we would need to start. Hmm? Because I really want to talk to you in this new sermon series about the virtue and the act of forgiveness. I really want to encourage you that Pastor Moses and I Starting tomorrow night, we did a couple of programs on, on what was that about that are honestly are very, very deep. You, you really need to watch the next two programs because, you know, we are, we're living in a day, my friends, where, you know, people are looking for all this glamour within the gospel. They're looking for all this, you know, secret revelation and, and secret understanding when you have these leaders that are that are you know broadcasting that you know when when they read the bible they they see things that you don't see and you know you need them to unpack it for you but but here's the reality that that simply that is not true how many understand that you're all anointed that you all have the Holy Spirit, that, that these ideas of secret revelation are nonsense. Now, things can be revealed to us that are in the Word, but can I just tell you something? If you ever hear me say that I see things in the Word of God that you cannot see, run away from me. I'll give you permission. If I, if I say you are not able to have it, run away from me. Now. Of course, we are anointed to teach and to preach and unpack the Word of God, but how many understand that the revelations of the Lord are for everybody? Hmm? They're for everyone, so that everyone would receive and that everyone would understand and that everyone would be blessed. And, and you know, th this morning, why do I, why do I say that, th that, that particular thing? Because, you know, when we talk about forgiveness, you know, sometimes we're going to have the attitude, well, you know what, it, it's, just so, it's just so fundamental, Pastor. We are, we are so beyond that. But the truth is we're not beyond that. Because the gospel is really about the cross. And if you have a gospel that doesn't have the cross, then I'm not sure what gospel you have, but it's not the gospel that Jesus preached. You cannot have the gospel without the centrality and the message of the cross. Because Paul said it this way, the cross is the power of the word. The cross is the power of the kingdom. It is through the cross that the Father has accomplished everything. Without it, we have no faith. Without it, we have no salvation. And what happened on the cross? Jesus dying, about to go to the Father. He looks at all that has happened to him throughout the day, really probably throughout the week. All the humiliation, all the insults, all the pain, all the abuse at the hands of the people that he created, at the hands of the people that he had blessed, at the hands of the people that he had fed. And what did he say? He looked at them and then looked to his father and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You, you do understand that at one point in your life when you came to Christ, that same prayer would have been applied to you. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. In other words, they, they've been living a life of darkness and blindness. They don't see, they don't understand. They've done all these things, but I'm about to open their eyes, but I want you to forgive them. Church, can I say this? As much as that prayer was for those people, it was also for the Lord himself because the Lord was not about to go to the Father. He was not about to go into eternity and have his soul vexed with unforgiveness and hatred and bitterness and holding things against people. No, he, he began to move into the office of the intercessor already, even before he had died. And he said those words, Father, forgive them. Don't, don't hold this against them. They're ignorant. They're ignorant. They don't know 
what they are doing. They're operating in the futility of their minds. But throughout his teachings, Jesus said this, as I have forgiven you, you must forgive others. Everybody say the word must. If you are going to be a follower of Jesus, forgiveness is not an option. Forgiveness is a requirement. It is a command. As a matter of fact, I, I don't believe you can be a follower of Jesus. I don't believe you can be a, a, a Christ disciple and not operate in both an attitude, because I believe it's an attitude, in an attitude and a spirit of forgiveness. You must forgive. As you have been forgiven, you must forgive. And then Jesus said this, he also said this, that to whom much has been forgiven, loves much. Hmm? If, if you have been forgiven for a lot, Jesus said, you will love a lot. And if you will love a lot, then, then those that come across your path that probably require less forgiveness than, than you required, what you're going to do, you're going you're gonna to forgive them. You remember, Jesus taught a parable about this and he, he used money. He used money as an example that, you know, one individual owed so much and, and he was shown mercy and then someone came along that owed him a pittance, a pittance of what he owed and that same individual refused to forgive. You know, sometimes we forget who we were. Huh? Sometimes we forget the pit that we were dug from, what, what the Lord had to forgive, forgive us of, and we, we become religious, we become pious because God has, has done so much. But rather than become pious, we, we ought to be more humble because we recognize, oh my God, how much you have brought me out of, how much you have forgiven me. Should I not forgive others? And I don't know if you have found this to be true, but how many have found that People can offend you. People can cross your path the wrong way. People can do things that, that are not very pleasant at times and that we don't appreciate. And, and so my friends, it's not that we forgive once, but honestly, it is a, it is a lifestyle. You have, you have entered, when you receive Christ and, and you say that I'm gonna follow Jesus, you have entered a lifestyle of applying forgiveness to those that are around you, whether they're the closest to you or whether they are strangers or you work with them, you're not, you're not under this system, you're under the kingdom of God. And so to forgive is to be Christ-like. To forgive is to be Christ-like. And so I want us to turn in our Bibles, I'm gonna have you stand in just a second. I want us to turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter six. And I wanna remind you of two things that, that I said out of my conversation with Prophet Terry that honestly revolutionized my mind. You can stand with me. Remember in our conversation with him, he said two things. Number one, he said that, you know, the worst thing to happen to the body of Christ is the concept of apology. Apologies are cheap. Words are cheap. Anybody, anybody could say, I'm sorry, after they've blown up your life. But that the kingdom principle is forgiveness. Because when... When we forgive, then we can't hold things against people. They, they are released from our court of judgment. And the second thing was, you remember that you cannot be offended, you can only take offense. You cannot be offended, you can only, in other words, if somebody does offend you, the only way that you can take it, or the only way that you can be offended is you have to take it. I, you know, I wanted to bring these blocks that Owen, my grandson, has at the house. I couldn't, I couldn't get into the toy box this morning, but they, they are these little blocks that have these little prongs on them, and they, and they stick together, and then you kind of build a building or something. And, and you know what, my friends, listen, unforgiveness is like that. It's, it's things that want to stick to us. It's almost like we have double-sided tape on us, or you can have Teflon. You can, you can have things either bounce off you, or you can have things stick to you. And, 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 and even culturally, I don't know about you, I don't want to offend all the cultures. Let me just offend my culture, all right? I come from a culture, whether we like it or not, Sabina, I come from a culture where we hold on to things. We, 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 we have a degree in offense. We love to be, I mean, we, we went, we got high level education on how to, how to hold grudges and how to be upset and how to uh, take it out on others. And, and, and even now, so not only is it human nature, uh, some of your cultures are the same, right? We, we know how to, how, how many know what I'm talking about? Who wants to be honest? Hmm? versus 
I have a disposition where I can let things go. And so in Matthew chapter five, chapter six, sorry, in verse five, here's what Jesus said. He said, and when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say, they already have their reward. You've been rewarded because people see you. You don't want that reward. It's cheap and it's passing. He said, but you, everybody say, but you. He says, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the, where? He's in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Who wants the father's reward? Yeah. He says, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. So first we had hypocrites, now we have heathens. He says, don't, don't be like them. Don't just repeat things, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Huh? Listen, listen, church. You're not going to be heard because you say a lot of things to God. Because you spent an enormous amount of time. You say, Pastor, are you telling us not to spend time with God? No, that's all I'm saying. I'm just saying, make sure that your heart is connected. It's not about the amount of words. This is Jesus saying this. He says, therefore, don't be like them, for your father knows the things that you have need before you ask him. He says, in this manner, therefore, pray. So he teaches us to pray. Our father, you know what, let's, can we say it together? Will you repeat after me? Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And there it is. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So you just prayed, don't forgive me any more than I forgive anybody else. You just prayed that. That's what you just prayed. And do not, and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Now watch this church. Now this is where everybody stops. Watch what Jesus does. He goes, he goes back into that area of forgive us our debts and he says this. For if you forgive men or women their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But, everybody say, but. If you do not forgive men or women their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. How many people need forgiveness? Here's what you need to do. You need to forgive. How do I get forgiveness? Hmm? I forgive others. Before you're seated, turn to a few people around you and say, have you forgiven everybody? Come on, tell them, ask them. Have you forgiven everybody? Come on, ask them. Huh? Have you forgiven everybody? Did you ask people? I hear a lot of... <laughs> I see a lot of kissing and hugging going on. It means there must be... Uh... Something's going on. So forgiveness is going on in this section right here. And <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Three things I want to say very quickly about this passage and then we're going to receive communion. Number one, if, if we're going to operate in the attitude and in the spirit of forgiveness, number one, you must be forgiven yourself. That, that means at some place, my friends, you know, those of you watching online, wherever you are, that, that you have come to Christ, that you have come to the Father, and that you have asked the Father for forgiveness of your sins, that, that your sins, iniquities, and all the, all the mistakes that we have made in our, in our past life and in our present life, that we have brought it under the blood of Jesus, because here is the truth. The truth is that nothing can take away your sin except for the blood of Jesus. Come on now. Huh? 
uh, not probation, not doing good things, not I'm going to be a better person, I'm going to I'm going to make up for what I did. There's nothing you can do to make up for what you did. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away your sins. And my friends, let me just say that I'm not trying to be uh, derogatory, I'm not trying to be offensive, but I I really thought about this and I thought, you know, there there is no other faith, there is no other religion on the face of the earth that gives you, can I use this word, that gives you the deal that Christianity gives you. None. None. A God and a Father that says, I love you. I will send my son. I will wash away your past, your, 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 your mistakes, the issues that you have done intentionally, unintentionally, uh, the, uh, the, the fact that you're born under sin. I, I'm going to take care of all your past. I'm, I'm going to give you the, the promises for your today and for your tomorrow. And then when you move on from this life, I will even give you eternity. I, I will give you heaven forever and ever and ever. My friends, listen, you can't find a better deal than that anywhere. I dare anybody, I dare anybody to bring me their faith and their religion that could say to me, we have a better deal than the deal that your God gives you. It just doesn't exist. And and you know what's amazing? It's not even man-made, it's God-made. It's God-made. God says, "This this is my plan, this is my idea to save you. So number one, we need to be forgiven of our sins. And if we're forgiven of our sins, then we understand that we will forgive others that we will provide to the same measure that the Lord forgave us, we will provide that measure to other people. You see, so many want to be forgiven by God by the truckload, but they want to forgive by the spoonful. Huh? But if you have been forgiven for much, then you ought to also forgive much. Number one, our sins are forgiven. Number two, we apply forgiveness to others. Number three, we continue to walk. In other words, we, we live in this attitude. We live in this intentionality. We, we live in this lifestyle that, that is not only a one-time thing, that I am continuously operating in the spirit of Christ and, and that I am continually forgiving others of their trespasses and I am also asking of forgiveness. That when I do wrong, when we do wrong, Rather than give a flippant little apology or I'm sorry, hmm, we ask for forgiveness because you see, if you ask for forgiveness, it means that the spirit of repentance has already worked in your heart, that you have been convicted in your heart, that that you are willing to be, can I say it this way, naked, vulnerable, that that you are willing to say, I've done something wrong and I'm, and I'm coming to you, not with an explanation, not with a text message or an email. I am coming to you with full humility saying that, that I have done wrong and I'm asking you to forgive me. The other side of that coin is that sometimes we, we need to be humble in accepting the fact that maybe somebody hurt us. Hmm? How often we, we have an attitude, oh, that, that didn't bother me, that didn't hurt me, that, that didn't affect me. How many understand that that's a spirit of pride and, and not the spirit of humility? And, and my friends, listen, if you're going to be liberated and you're going to be delivered and you're going to be healed and made whole, then you need to operate in vulnerability so that, so that my friends, listen, this, 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 this attribute of forgiveness can work in your life. I guarantee you by the word of God that the healthiest people, mentally, physically, emotionally, in every way, the healthiest people on the face of the earth are people that are able to forgive and let go of things. I'm just telling you. The Mayo Clinic, the famous clinic, has done studies. Studies on the the connection between crippling diseases and unforgiveness. They, They will ask people, Do you have any unforgiveness? Do you have any bitterness in your heart against any other people? Can you imagine, my friends, that that maybe some of our physical diseases don't actually originate in your body, they originate in your soul, but they're manifesting in your body? Could we be healthier? Could we sleep better? Maybe some of the disorders that that we have, some of the mental issues that we have are, are connected to this to this idea that we're not forgiving, we're not releasing, but we are we are holding on to things. And my friends, listen, the, the more you hold on to things, the sicker you get. 
Now, I don't know anybody. I'm going to be, can I just be a little, can I have grace to be gross just for a minute? Everybody say, go ahead, pastor, be gross. I don't know if there's anybody in the room that likes to vomit, but I personally do not like to vomit. If you've ever had the stomach flu, you know, I, I do everything I can. I breathe myself out of it. I, what, I don't, I, I'll spit nickels. I'm like, I don't want to vomit. But how many have found that when the body wants to expel that thing because you got a virus, how, how many know that once you do vomit, then you feel better? But the act of vomiting is, is, is not good. But, but you see, my friends, it's, it's like that. Unforgiveness is like having a virus that is in your soul. And your soul saying, I want to expel this stuff. But somehow you breathe yourself out of it. You talk yourself out of it. You justify yourself out of it. And that virus remains in you. You continue to feel sick. So many people are sick spiritually really because they... They don't want to release this thing. They, they don't sleep well. They don't think well. They don't act well. And, and this thing is constantly playing in your mind. You dream about it. You think about it. It's almost, it's almost like the, the enemy has the reverse button. Reverse. Replay it. Replay it. Replay it. And every time you replay it, it gets worse. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The prescription is forgiveness. The prescription is letting it go. I mean, really letting it go. You know, let it go, let it, let it go, right? Isn't that some ice person or whatever that? Who is it? Frozen. Let it, everybody, come on, sing with me. Say, let it go. Let it go. Turn to somebody and say, let it, come on, Anus, let it go. Come on, prophesy over somebody, let it go. Come on. Let it go. <laughs> Just let it go. <laughs> the idea that we're going to forgive means that we are releasing people from their faults, releasing people from what they've done to us, maybe the injustice. And my friends, can I just say this? Do you know that you can forgive people and they might not even be alive? They might be dead and gone and here's the power of Here's the power of forgiveness that it works even when people are dead. My friends, forgiveness even works when people will not cooperate with you. You ever gone to people to try and make things right or to ask about forgiveness and all of a sudden you get the cold shoulder or they, or they stonewall you? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you're operating in the spirit of forgiveness, it's still going to work in you. And here's a good question. Here's a good question for you. Do I need to be spiritual? Hey, let's do a survey. Let's do a survey. How many people believe you need to be spiritual to forgive? Show of hands. How many people say you don't need to be spiritual to forgive? How many are afraid to vote? John, did you vote? Did you vote, bro? You didn't vote, did you? You're afraid to vote, aren't you? Yeah. But isn't it amazing that even unbelievers can forgive? How does an unbeliever without Christ forgive? And let's be, listen, I know unbelievers that can honestly, truly forgive and let it go. And then I know believers that have Christ and can't let it go. It is a, it is a virtue, it is an act of attitude and intentionality that not only works for the believer, it works for the unbeliever because I really believe it's a universal thing and I, I actually think it falls more under emotional intelligence than it does spirituality, which means I don't need to be all that spiritual if I understand the heart and the mind of Christ that I can actually forgive and not even be that spiritual. And so can it mean this? Can it mean, watch this, oh, see if you can catch this church, that when we're talking about the heart and the mind and the soul, that some people might actually be healthier, but they're less spiritual, and those that quote unquote are more spiritual are actually less healthy. Well, somebody ought to tweet that, Pastor Mo, because I have no idea what I just said, but it was good. I've found people, oh, we pray, we fast, we're, we're in the word, but, but when it comes to this area, they are so unhealthy. I'm like, how come you didn't read this in the word? How come, how come you weren't able to operate in this if, if you say you're so spiritual? Which says to me, you don't even need to be that spiritual to operate in forgiveness. 
It doesn't even need your, the cooperation of the other person. Here's my next point. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting. You, you ever heard the forgive and forget? Yeah, can I just help you? That's complete nonsense. There are just some things, church, you're never gonna forget. As a matter of fact, can I say it this way? If you cannot forget, it means that the forgiveness is that much more powerful because now I am forgiving the thing that I actually remember. It's easy to forget and go, oh, if I forgot, maybe I don't even need to forgive. And, and there have been times in my life when God has given me a grace where people have offended and I, I don't even recall what they did. Pastor Carolyn has asked me, do you, know what, do you remember what they did to you? And I'm like, I honestly don't remember. And I know what you're thinking, that's just old age. You know what I'm telling you? So. <laughs> It's the grace of God, but, but then there are other times where that grace doesn't operate. You know exactly what they did. And despite the fact that you know, you say, I have chosen to forgive and to release. But you know what that means? That means that when you have forgiven, you don't bring it up again. Huh? Come on, church. <laughs> Have you, ever, have you ever had somebody say to you they forgive you and then they rip your face off? And you're like, well, thank God you forgave me because I, I don't know what would have happened if you had forgiven me. <laughs> that means when we release them from our, our court of judgment, we, we're, we're not able to bring it. You say, well, pastor, you know, that's no good because if I forgive them and they're released, then, then they never pay a price. Oh, let me help you. Nobody gets away with anything. We, we have a God who is judged that hears every word, knows every action. As a matter of fact, you know what? You know what our God says? I know the motive of the heart. Watch this. When you go to quote unquote apologize, God knows your motive. Not what you said, not only what you said, but God says, I know the motive behind that. I, I know the reason why you did what you did. I, I know the reason and the motivation and the inspiration behind. Listen, maybe, maybe it was political. Maybe it was just to cover your own skin. Maybe, maybe it was not to just make things right, but maybe there is another agenda. God says, I know that too. It's not about forgetting. Joseph of the Old Testament, when he said to his brothers, what you did, you meant for evil. Joseph never forgot. But you notice something about Joseph when he confronted them, he showed kindness to them, he showed the spirit of Christ. We never have a record that he ever brought it up again. Do you know that your father, when he has forgiven you, never brings up your sins again? Come on, somebody. The Bible says, I've removed your sin as far as the east is from the west. Wherever, wherever that is, only God knows. He goes, I, I don't even see it because it is under the blood of Jesus. Listen, forgiveness, church, listen. Forgiveness does not require the individual that has done wrong to pay you back in any way. It's not about them. You know, if, well, if you make it up to me. No, 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 no. That, imagine God saying that to us. Well, why don't you live hell holy for five years and then come back? No. No, no, we provide forgiveness because we're walking in the spirit of Christ. You say, well, pastor, what if they take advantage of me? I have news for you. They're going to take advantage of you. You're going to be used. I would stand here and lie to you if I would say to you, you're never going to be taken advantage of. No one's ever going to take, you know, a special, special advantage of your kindness, of your goodness, of your, of your willing. Uh, uh, listen, listen, church, it would be dishonest of me. You are going to suffer. The Bible says they that will live godly will suffer persecution. You will suffer, but so did Jesus. And are you more interested in what Jesus says about you or what people say about you? Would you rather be more like Jesus or would you rather be more like people? We want to be like Jesus. We want to provide forgiveness and then let God deal with the outcomes and say, Lord, you're going to deal with it. The Bible says vengeance belongs to you. I love what Jesus said. Don't be like them, you see. But here's the problem. We never think that we are the them. Don't be like them. That's not me. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Self-awareness is, is about saying that could be me. 
I could be the issue, I could be the problem, I could be the one that, that has caused all the strife. You can forgive and not necessarily forget. Now, does that mean, pastor, does that mean I, I'm just gonna open my life to this individual or individuals all the time so, so that I could be repeatedly abused and used? No. No, my friends, we have to have wisdom in that if, if you know, I'm learning this lesson the hard way, but, but here's, here's a philosophy of mine. And those of you that have employees, your supervisors, your own companies, whatever, you know, when people tell you who they are over and over and over again, good or bad, believe them. Hello? Believe them. And if you have somebody that is toxic, if you have somebody that is constantly using you, abusing you, you don't have to subject, now listen, you have to walk in forgiveness, but you don't have to subject yourself to them over and over and over. Here's a formula that Jesus gave us. He says that if somebody slaps you on the cheek, what are you supposed to do? Turn the other cheek. But I only have two cheeks, right? <laughs> He didn't say get continuously slapped in the face. Now in the Old Testament, if you want to be an Old Testament person, Moses, not our Moses, but the Moses, right? The Moses said an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. We like that. You punch me in the face, I punch you in the face. You steal from me, I steal from you. You say bad things about me, I say bad things about you. But in the New Testament, Jesus said, you know, you heard it taught. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Go the second mile. Turn the other cheek. Jesus said, I am, I am raising. See, grace raises the standard. It doesn't lower it. And you're like, well, that's not fair and that's not right. Yeah, but you get a greater reward in the New Testament. You may not get the reward of revenge. And, and those of you, you know, I'm sure you've all taken revenge at some time. How many have found out that revenge in the moment feels good? Come on, I know you're all saints right now. You're like, Pastor, we don't know what you're talking about. Huh? Come on, none of you have been on the road where somebody cuts you off and then you speed in front of them and you cut them off and nobody in our church, I know nobody in our church, but, and for the moment you're like, yeah, eat my exhaust, right? Yeah. Huh? And then something happens in your heart and you're like, oh, I don't feel good. I don't feel right. I, because what? We have grieved Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit says I don't behave like that. The kingdom isn't like that. And so for the moment, see, revenge is, is mo for the moment, it's like, yeah, it's so empowering. And then, and then you feel awful where, where grace is the reverse. For the moment, you feel like, why did I allow them to do that? Why, why did I allow them to say that? Why did I allow them to treat me like? For the moment, you feel bad. But then all of a sudden, when you look back at a situation, you go, you know what? I'm glad I acted in the spirit of Christ. I'm glad I brought glory to the Father. I'm glad I, I didn't reproach his name. I'm, I'm glad I just didn't retaliate because somebody said something or did something. I, I'm glad that I, I offered the spirit of forgiveness. You see, it's, it's long term. You gotta make a decision. Do I want short term? Do I want long term? As I said to you, worship team, get ready. Um, as I said to you, you have to, you have a decision to make because listen, listen, a couple of things. Unforgiveness is not a trait of holy people. Let me say that again. Unforgiveness is not a trait of holy people. And church, let me say this about unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is like baby hate. It starts like a baby. It starts like a, a seed. But what happens is we begin to feed that baby. We begin to feed that baby and that baby begins to grow. Because see, unforgiveness doesn't remain as a seed. It grows. Eventually it can become hate, it can become bitterness. It could become even third party offense, which by the way, is, is the worst offense. The worst offense I think you can have is third party offense where you are offended because of somebody else. Huh? You offended my friend, Pastor Moses. Now I'm offended at you. You didn't do anything to me, but, but I'm offended at you because you offended him and he's my friend. 
And then you know what happens? The two of them get together and you're still left in a fence. You got suckered. You got suckered. Don't take offense. Especially if it's not yours. Don't, don't, don't buy into that lie. Don't, don't buy into that thing because that, that thing is meant to make your soul toxic. And that baby grows and you become angry and you become full of bitterness and hatred. And, and then all of a sudden, people don't even want to be around you because you're, you're full of, of, of all this unforgiveness and all this unhealthiness. And you're like, we don't even want to be around you. My friends, listen, forgiveness is the great liberator. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate your time. Will you please like and subscribe so that you will get notifications? And by the way, your comments and your feedback are very important to us. Even sermon series and messages that you would like to hear about, please let us know. Drop us a line. We would love to incorporate that into our teaching and our preaching. We appreciate you and thank you.